Okay, we're still in the middle of Perak Yudtet. It is second longest Perak. Um, definitely another uh, number of weeks still when we're on this, but now at least within the Perak, at least there's like subtopics. Uh, so we're going to talk now about about, uh, about uh, Avas Hashem. It says, Now let's focus, focus on the concept of Ahava. And there's three branches, there's three uh, subcategories, basically we're going to discuss three components that are relevant to Ahava. Hasimcha, uh, which is interesting, so a lot of times I think when, if we were to define Ahava, we would just say Simcha, happiness, right? Um, love, happiness, similar. Hadvekos, which is like clinging, and here is a uh, kina, which is not jealousy. Uh, it's defined here as like the zealousness in defending his honor, basically being like so determined to always defend Hashem. And he, he says, Vehine, Inyan Ha'ava, Hushi Yah Adam Choshek Mit Ava Mamish El Kirvaso Yispar Rodif Achar Kedushaso. That the whole notion of Ava is that person should have a constant desire and the uh, and determination basically to get close to Hashem and pursue Kedusha as much as he can, right? Think about someone who, uh, let's say, you idolize a sports player, right? So you're going to have the person's posters in your room, you're going to try to get all their, uh, their baseball cards, you're going to do what you can to uh, try to get his autograph to meet him if you can after a game, right? There may be, and um, you're constantly going to try to pursue that person's memorabilia and what everything about that person. So, uh, someone want, loves Hashem, you want to pursue mitzvahs, you want to do what you can to get close to Hashem. Just as a person pursues, a physical person will try to pursue someone that they desire. And so he says that uh, one's desire for Hashem should be so intense. It should be just like mention it. But when you mention Hashem's name, when you talk about the great things Hashem does, like think about this, what we say in Modim and Shmona Esrei, um, we discuss praising Hashem, we discuss these concepts. Being involved in studying Hashem's Torah, and that itself, um, like uh, the song, the Nas thing of the song when it came to the next word, Chashua Oneg Mamish, like Lulei Sarascha, Rav Baruch Simon, a Rebbe, it's his favorite song, Lulei Sarascha, Azavati. So the Torah, it's like a like a toy, it's a, a delight, something you want you want to you want to play with, you want to enjoy. Like someone who loves his wife of his youth or his only child with intense love. Um, he says, Just speaking about them, Mamesh brings you simcha. Right? There's certain times where, uh, I mean, I can think back to, uh, to my dating days, and uh, there's certain topics I enjoy talking about. Right? Let's say someone asked me about music. I love talking about music. Um, so, so there's certain things here. A person has such a love of Hashem that, that you're excited to, to talk about Hashem. You're excited to hear the Bar Torah, uh, learn a halacha, and, and, um, something that you didn't know, to be able to apply that to your life. Okay, on a cost of, as the Pasuk says in your Miyahu, in a paraclam, a Pasuk, your pet, kimide dabri bo zachar is kareni of. Right, you could uh, think of the song in your head. That uh, we say, whenever I speak of him, I mention him more and more. You know, when I start the conversation, ah, oh, I get so wrapped up um, in talking about Hashem and praising Hashem, I can't stop. Such a love for Hashem. He says, "Hine, vade misha oy besboro ava amitis lo yeni achavados al shum tam shava olam." That that uh, if you have a person who really, really loves Hashem that they're not going to stop serving Hashem for, for any reason, unless he's going to say, um, unless it's like 
they're really, really stuck. Um, I'll just use as, as a mushal when it comes to, let's say, going to Minyan. So that's a good example. Um, obviously, in uh, Corona times and uh, sometimes traveling, there's certain times where things are much more difficult, but typically, right? Someone, um, someone has a, a desire to, uh, to do the right thing, to serve Hashem, and so you want to go to Minyan. And sometimes it's not always so easy to go to Minyan. Sometimes you have to, you have to get a, I mean, sometimes it depends what Minyan is. If it's in the morning, you have to get out of bed early. If it's referring to Mara, it's like, oh, you're very comfortable at home. You had a late day at work. You still have to get out of your apartment, get out of your house and, and uh, drive to shul. Uh, it's not such an easy thing, right? And there are plenty of times where sometimes we are we're in situations that are, are not so simple to, to get a minion and uh, requires a little bit more mysterious nefesh than the typical getting out of bed or leaving your apartment when you're tired. Uh, sometimes it requires uh, driving a little further it requires waking up, even the, getting up early, even though you had a really rough night with your kids. Whatever it may be, we know that there's times where we're pushed our limits, and, and that kind of uh, is the test for us. Um, this is not much of a praise for myself, but typically speaking, so I have that question here, typically, it's uh, very, uh, very uh, easy and uh, part of my routine. So I work there, so I just go there and dive in at 8 o'clock, not a big deal. Uh, this morning, my son was sick. I mean, he's still, unfortunately, a little sick. And so I stayed home and my wife started work at seven. So I, it happens to be my son woke up at about 4.55. Yes, you heard that correctly. Uh, but either way, I had my alarm set for, for 6.10. And I went to the 6.30 minute and I left right after Shimon Asari so I could make it back by seven. Um, my wife was working at home, but she had to start at seven, basically. So um Right, so sometimes the meaning did I want to get out of bed earlier than I normally would have? No, uh, but at the same time, right, we make certain uh, certain sacrifices, certain sacrifices, and it's a testament to, to where we're holding, basically. It says so, sometimes, right, on if sometimes in Malaya Anas Mamish, like sometimes it is uh, we're forced to, to not be able to do this thing that we want to do to serve Hashem. And he's not going to require uh, persuasion or enticement. Meaning Hashem is not going to have to offer uh, bonus points on your, on your uh, test just uh, to be able to do this. Rather, on the contrary, that your heart, we're drawn, we're drawn to this. If it wasn't for something that is uh, preventing us from doing this, Continues. Because this mida of this intense ava of pushing oneself to serve Hashem in whatever, almost whatever the cost, and that that real deep love and passion says that's what we're discussing. The whole chapters of that Hasidus says the the Hasidim Arishonim. Um, referring to uh, the Tanan, the Amoraim, so they had this, he says, basically. Kamama or David Amel, maybe even earlier, he was referring to the Avos and people like David Amel. But Kamama or David Amel, or Shalom, as David Amel said, Hillim, Perak Men Beis, Sukim Beis and Gimel, also a song you could sing in your head. Kayal Tarog al Fike Maim, I do it Vekas. Kayal Tarog al Fike Maim, King Nafshi Tarog al Lacha Lukim. So just like as the deer calls longingly, for the brooks of water, so does my soul call lovingly to you, Hashem. Sama Nafshi Lelukim, also a different song, uh, multiple versions of this song. Sama Nafshi Lelukim, Lekel Chai, Masai Avo, Begomer. That, uh, right, but Sama, my thirst, I have a thirst, my soul thirsts for you, Hashem, the living God. When When is the day going to come? Referring to, uh, right. When is the day going to come and appear and I'll, and I'll be able to basically appear before? And the Gomer, the Gomer, Nirsufa, the Gam Kalsan, Nachi, the Hatros, Hashem, the Gomer. And uh, it says elsewhere, my, my soul yearns, and indeed it pines for the courtyards of Hashem. Let me say again, Samalachan, Nachi, Kamalachan, Sari, the Gomer, different end of the Basak, I mean, different Pasak here. My soul, so, so, uh, my soul, yearns for you 
and uh, my my flesh longs for you. In a parched and thirst, thirsty land with no water. Basically, all different uh, psukim that discuss just how much a person has this desire to get close to Hashem. It says, All this is uh, based on the desire to get close to Hashem. Similar to that which the Navi says, That your name, I, 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 when I say your name, so Taiva Savage is a desire for my soul to, to, to say your name, to be able to dive into praise you. The Omer Nafshi Vesicha Balaila Apu Sebikirbi Ashcha Reka. Because my soul desired you during the night. As long as my spirit is within me, I seek you out. As long as I'm alive, Hashem, I'm gonna I'm gonna be searching for you with uh, to, to serve you as best I could. The David Atma no Omer and David says himself about himself in Tehillim, Parach Samach. Gimel Pasuk Zion. Im Zacharticha al Yituai Bashmuros Eget Bach. He says, When I remember you upon my couch in night watches, I meditate upon you. Um, the air, Haone Vashashua, Shahaya Lobidabro Bovish, who the Shivacha of Yaspar Shemo. Here, David describes the pleasure and delight they experienced when speaking about Hashem and his praises and Hashem's praises. The Omer and David said further, the light in your in your mitzvahs that I love. The Amar Gamid Osecha Shashua Evigomer. Indeed, your testimonies are my delight. All these things, similar ideas to desire to serve Hashem, desire to follow Hashem's mitzvahs. And uh, it says, "Vehine zos vadesh ava zos tzar shalogu yitiye ava hatzli abedavar." There's a uh, concepts of Conditional love and unconditional love. Um, in general, a lot of things that that we do, even that we enjoy, it might be a avat of a davar. It might be dependent upon something. So let's say I'll go back to sports, for example. Um, it's common that someone will like a team, but they might only like the team when the team is good or mediocre. When the team is last in the league, many seasons in a row. Sometimes someone will uh, jump off the bandwagon and uh, hop on someone else's bandwagon, right? So that's ava tzluvidavar. It's dependent on something. It's dependent on my team being pretty good or good. Uh, but but when someone uh, goes through, no matter what, this is it's not based on anything. It's just based on my love for you, no matter what happens. So like the love a parent has for a child uh, is ava is ava Um so he says here that the love for Hashem is certainly has to be an avat shalot avat It can't be dependent on something. It can't be that Hashem, I'll love you if you make sure that uh, I don't suffer. I'll love you if you bless me with uh, with children. I love you. I'll love you if you bless me with good parnasa. I'll love you if I make sure that uh, I know I get a lot of olam haba. Right. So that's not that's not true love. The love of Hashem for the fact that Hashem will make you rich or Hashem will help you succeed. It has to be like the love a father has for a child. It's, it's natural love. It's something that's inside the person that 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 a person is uh, strong towards us just naturally that uh, you have this bond. In my mind, the the pasuk in Devarim, Parak Lam Beis, pasuk Bav says, "Hello, who avicha kana? Is he not your father, your master?" I mean, we serve Hashem. We have this connection to Hashem, and of uh, viewing Hashem as a as a father figure. Mivchan Ava Hazos. So, what's the test? I guess how are we gonna see whether your love is conditional or unconditional? Uh, there have been a number of times throughout the Sefer. Where even when we read something, let's say in the category of Yershamayim, so we'd like to think we'd have Yershamayim, I hope. But sometimes it requires a little more analysis. Like, do I really have Yershamayim? So over here, like, we'd like to think, I'd like to think, my love to Hashem is unconditional. But uh, my life, thank God, but Hara, my life is uh, very good. So, so what's the test to see? 
the test to see your if your love is for Hashem is true is when things are not easy, when there's suffering, when there's difficulty. Because are you going to basically love Hashem and serve Hashem with vigor in those situations? Uh, that's what it comes down to. I'll tell you what's something interesting. I heard from Rai Steer Przanski, who's uh, aside from being a very uh, big rabbi, also is a extraordinarily uh, big history buff. And Rai said that in the Holocaust, they did a study, did a survey, I guess, afterwards. And it happened to have been that most people, I believe the percentage, it was somewhere around 88%. 88% of people, whether if they were religious before the war, before the Holocaust, they stayed religious. And if they're irreligious, they stayed irreligious. There was a swaying of about 12%. And if I'm not mistaken, it was about 8% that were religious became irreligious and 4% that were irreligious became more religious, somewhere around there. So those are not exact, but it was, it was somewhere in that, that ballpark. Um, and you were able to see certainly that most people stayed convicted to what they were doing prior. Someone who was religious prior stayed religious. And sometimes someone, even if they weren't religious, they could become more religious. But the fact that such a, an overwhelming majority of people did stay religious, even going through something that we, I literally cannot imagine, I don't know, say one day, one hour, certainly one day or one week of what they went through. And uh, to be able to go through that and still still be uh, faithful to Hashem is is unbelievable testament to, the, to those tzaddikim. Uh, it says, V'chein Amr Zechron Lebracha, says the Gemara Brachos, and that min da'al da'al da'al. The Avda Es Hashem Al Kacha B'Chol Abav Chav Shem Ashcha. In this pasuk, we're all familiar with pasuk in Shema. He says, "Afidu No Tel Snatcha." The Gemara says, when it comes to when it says B'Chol Nashcha, Afidu No Tel Snatcha. You have to love Hashem, even to the point where you're willing to give up your life for Hashem. And of course, there's a separate pasuk in the Torah that says B'Chay B'Hem, because you shall live by the mitzvahs. Now, should live by them, shouldn't die by them. And therefore, uh, in many situations, a person is able to violate mitzvos and uh, to sin in order to stay alive. Uh, but there are some exceptions to that. And, um, and if it's one of those exceptions, a person has to be willing to give their life for Hashem. And when it says, so a person has to be willing to that even to serve Hashem, even if a person is, uh, has to lose all his money. Um, there is, I remember, here it says in the footnote, there's something interesting. Um, I'll read it as follows. Just as the earlier part of the Pasuk means that a person must continue to love Hashem even if he threatens to take his life, so is this part understood to mean that a person should persist in his love for Hashem even if he causes a person to lose all of his wealth. Another explanation is that a person must be prepared to forfeit all of his money for the love of Hashem to avoid transgressing uh, a sin. In certain instances, one must also be prepared to forfeit his life for the love of Hashem. Um, so we have we have these concepts, of course, um, of, uh, of being able to go to go above and beyond and being uh, willing to to sacrifice and to whatever situation comes upon you to to serve Hashem. Um, he quoted the footnote here. Um, in my sefer, there's like two layers footnotes. I can't remember what it is. But basically, you have uh, the text here. Then there's footnotes to the text here, and then sometimes there's longer footnotes, usually in the form of stories. Sometimes, uh, not always stories, but uh, if there is a story, it's usually in the, those lower footnotes. There are a few stories here. One of them I'll share with you. Um, this is obviously not something that's easy to uh, for us to, to relate to or to understand how a person could do this, uh, but the Piasets and Rebbe, the uh, basically lost is let me uh i'll actually i'll just i'll, I'll read the story for us okay 
This is the other one. I'll put you the story. Kulam is Kalma Shapiro. Shapiro, the Rebbe of Yasetsna, the author of the Esh Kodesh, took refuge in Warsaw with his family in the early days of World War II. Two days before Sukkot in 1939, a bomb struck outside the Rebbe's residence, and his only son was critically wounded. So he had one son who, right before Sukkot, was uh, wounded by a bomb. He was in critical condition. Later that day, as the Rebbe's daughter-in-law stood anxiously at the entrance of the makeshift hospital where her husband had been taken, another bomb struck and killed her. So his son, his only son, was, uh, say, only her firstborn, yeah, his only son was in critical condition and right before Sukkot, and his daughter-in-law was waiting by the hospital and was struck by a bomb and killed. Wow. The next day, so that was Arab Arab Sukkot. The next day, Arab Sukkot, the Polish defenders sur surrendered, and the fighting subsided as the German army took control of Warsaw. The Rebbe's son was transferred to a better medical facility, and his daughter-in-law was buried. Despite his personal tragedy and the anxiety over his son's condition, the Rebbe insisted that uh, the Yontif of Sukkot be a joyous one. That night and the next day, he observed the first day of Sukkot with melodious tefillos and the customary rabbinic tish, as if things were normal. Sadly, on the second day of Sukkot, the Rebbe's son succumbed to his wounds and died. So his daughter-in-law died, Erev, I guess, Erev, Erev Sukkot, and his son died the second day of Sukkot. But it was still Yom Tov. And containing his feelings, the Rebbe didn't allow a word of sorrow to escape his lips that day or the next day. And the, and the next day, it was a three-day Yom Tov, go figure, and the next day was Shabbos on which he again led a tish with superhuman self-control. Only when Shabbos ended did he allow his terrible grief to take hold, crying inconsolably and saying, for me personally, the war, the war is already lost. I pray only that Hashem will help the community of Israel emerge in tech. Um, uh, it goes on with another free story, but I mean, we can't understand can't fathom how someone is able uh, to do that, to have that uh, beyond that madriga. Uh, but he didn't want to dampen the young tiff. But every her uh, tried his best to uh, keep his emotions inside till after young tiff. There we are. We'll, do, we'll go for uh, a few more minutes. Amnam, Kedesh Loti Yena Atzaras Vadachakim Koshi Amniya Ela Abba. However, in order that these troubles and distresses that a person experiences in life, um, that they're not, like, they don't hold the person back from being able to love Hashem. A person has to have two responses. One of which applies to everyone. The second applies to people in a higher madriga. First is based on the Gemara Brachos Daf Samachum Beis that the concept that what Hashem does is for the best, and even though we can't see it, we cannot understand. We think about that story that I just said for even a second, can't imagine how that's for the best in any way. Uh, but to uh, have a level of Muna that uh, that Hashem knows what He's doing, and that Hashem does things for the best, and. Uh, and even if the suffering that is and uh, this difficulty that's before a person, he says, in any of MS Alatova Mitis, we have to believe it's truly good. Imagine very if I were to say, tell someone that oh, it's cut off their arm, it's cut off their leg, I think cruelest person in the world but if it was a doctor who was amputating to save their life by like taking off a limb that, that's a great thing right the person has a life they have to have their limb amputated he says even though the action of chopping off a person's limb seems extremely cruel actually an act of mercy uh, in truth, to be able to have a person uh, be able to, to still still be alive. The patient 
isn't going to lose any uh, affection towards the doctor because of what the doctor did, right? The doctor is doing this to help him. Allah Adra, rather on contrary, Yosef Avalioso, the patient will love the doctor even more if he stayed alive through this. Hina Davrazeh, so through this thing. The Yashov Adam Shkol Mashakash Parhu Oisa Imo, when a person thinks that what that that what Hashem does for them, the Tovaso who Osa, that Hashem does this, Hashem does this for the good. Whether it's something that involves our physical body, whether it's something uh, you lose money in the stock market, a lot of money in the stock market, your job, profession, whatever it may be, things aren't going well financially. No person can fathom. How is this for the best? You have to believe this is for the best. Person shouldn't weaken and lower their love for Hashem. Because of this uh, difficulty, a person should constantly try to grow, and uh, in in their love, their love for Hashem. Um, I think we will stop here.